Hey everybody, welcome to Planes Overhead and a Merry Christmas to everybody across the globe. And we're going to continue with our 320 uh, series and we're going to do flight management today. Disclaimer remains the same, do not use any of this that you're studying here in practical life. Please always follow your FCOMs. Uh, before we actually begin flight management, uh, which is part of auto flight, of course, uh, I want you to uh, know that flight management is actually a vast topic again. The, the whole auto flight is actually. Uh, but uh, what I'm going to do in this video is give you a proper foundation so that you can build up build upon that by studying the FCOMs. So the flight management and guidance system performs navigation functions, lateral and vertical flight planning functions. It also computes performance parameters and guides the aircraft along a pre-planned route. So FMGS is the main master in the aircraft and it has two components as you can see one is management and the other is guidance we already talked about guidance in terms of FDs autopilot and auto thrust and all those now we're talking about flight management alone now the flight management part controls the following functions navigation management of flight planning prediction and optimization of performance management of navigation radios management of displays and so on all right so now each FMGC computes its own aircraft position and this is called FM position. Now the FMGC selects the most accurate position considering the estimated accuracy and integrity of each positioning equipment. So we have three ways of doing it and uh, these are mixed IRS, GPS and radio. So we're going to talk about all of these now. Mixed IRS. Now IRS is inertial reference system just to give you a you know idea. It is a uh, computing position based on uh, using gyros so actually you can go and study it's a vast topic in itself so anyways there are three IRS's in the 320 aircraft and what mixed IRS does is calculates a mean weighted average of all the three and gives you a very accurate position and it's called mixed IRS position next up GPS now GPS is not raw GPS here now each IRS computes a mixed IRS and GPS position and this is called GPRS position so this accuracy is also very high for this each IRS can independently select their GPS source in order to maximize the availability of GPS data if the GPS is not giving you accurate data the IRS can reject that GPS itself next is radio each FMGC uses on-site on navigates to compute its own radio position. Now, radio position is based on DMEs, VORs, you know, localizer DMEs and all NDBs and all of that sort. So, available navigates are DME, DME, VOR, DME, lock, DME, DME, lock, VOR, DME, lock. So, all this DME, DME, if you have DME, DME, uh, you have a good accuracy because you have two uh, distance measuring equipment. So, your position should be quite accurate in terms of radio waves it's not as accurate as mixed IRS's and GPS of course but it's good enough in case of standby requirement and at takeoff what happens is the FM position is updated to the runway threshold position as stored in the database the moment you actually put your uh, thrust levers to the takeoff uh, thrust setting the FM position is automatically updated to the runway threshold position you can in fact actually uh, in the MCDU uh, you can actually set up uh, even takeoff shift that is called where you if, suppose you're taking off from an intersection taxiway intersection if you set that it will also update itself from that intersection point all right now let, next talk uh, let's talk about flight planning now fmgs can contain two different flight plans the first one is the active flight plan that is actually active and it is that that's the one you that you're following and there's another one called the secondary flight plan which the flight crew, crew may use to you know set an alternate takeoff runway if it is uh, required to plan a diversion or maybe uh, you have an engine out procedure and all lot of lot of things can be done in the secondary flight plan so there are two different of two, two different flight plans now each flight plan has a lateral and a vertical segment okay so the lateral flight plan defines the intended horizontal flight path this includes your track heading or you know anything that is horizontal Vertical flight plan defines the intended speed and altitude profile for the aircraft to follow while it is flying the lateral flight plan. So suppose uh, this is talking about your you know, rate of descent, climb, altitude, all of that will come into vertical flight plan. Now the FMGS has two databases to plan and manage the flight and they are navigation and performance databases. Now what happens in navigation is you have all your VOR stored, NDBs, airports, ILS frequencies, uh, VOR frequencies and all of that sort. Performance is your aircraft performance, your ex example like you know ETA, estimated fuel on board and all performance related database. So it will extract data from this and do the computation and then perform the flight planning. 
uh, here I just try to show uh, this is the MCDU here on your uh, pedestal and uh, any lateral changes that are made in a flight plan are done from the left hand side key example if you have a takeoff runway if you have your SIDS and your stars and anything of that sort is made on the left side okay any vertical changes are made on the right side right keys there's let's suppose example speed as you can see here speed key 148 210 and uh, top of climb top of descent altitude constraints if you have certain altitude constraints that you cannot over this point you need to be 7000 only so all that of change all that changes can be made on the mcdu now we are coming into the last part of this video. Uh, I wanted to discuss these two important uh, topics. Quick, brief idea, econ speed. Now, econ stands for economy. So it is an optimum speed computed by the FMGC to reduce the total flight cost and is based on following factors. So now, you know, flight cost obviously includes saving time and saving fuel. So it's a speed that is computed by the FMGC. It will have the, it will take into consideration gross weight, cost index, flight level, winds, aircraft performance. Now we talked about cost index. It's an interesting uh, concept. Cost index, it is the ratio of flight time cost to fuel cost. It's very important factor in the uh, commercial business that you know your cost index. So the aircraft uh, airline operators will have a certain uh, you know formula and everything depending on the age of the aircraft fuel consumptions and lot of parameters that it calculates cost index for various sectors and routes so that is given to the pilot and pilot all he has to do is enter into the mcdu so it has a value from zero to triple nine where zero is ideal of course it's not possible uh, it corresponds to minimum fuel consumption and basically that means it's giving you maximum range but uh, zero is just an ideal value you could be you can never be at zero because you'll you will consume some fuel too and you'll utilize some time to maintain that sector so that is the range of cost index value it is entered in the mcdu init page all right i think i will actually do an mcdu video as well so that you can you know understand how an mcdu is filled all right uh, we are at the end of this video thank you for watching guys subscribe to the youtube channel and like the facebook page for regular updates give the video a thumbs up if you like the video do not forget to share it too comment below if you have any doubts and uh, i am available on whatsapp email youtube facebook of course cheers and happy landings guys have a great day bye bye and merry christmas again